Welcome back to the FPS series. And in this time, we're going to get straight to the point. We're going to add a game mode. And the game mode that we're going to add is free for all. Now, before we get into the game, we're going to check out what we have so far. So this is what we have so far. We have basic movements, basic shooting. Although I have a missing texture, I'll fix that in a minute. And we can obviously walk around, jump around. And we can do all, all sorts of things. And now we're going to add in some AI. This is, by the way, the settings menu. First things first, we're going to need a AI to work with. The way we're going to implement the AI is we're going to make a copy of this controller. We're going to tag it as AI. We're going to remove the player controller so we don't move two players at the same time. We only move one player, the one that we're playing. And then we're going to give it some values. And here it is. We have a player. He cannot move yet. We don't have a AI system working yet. So he walks around and shoots people, but he's just standing there stationary. So what we can do is we can shoot him. He takes damage. If we shoot him in the head, he takes more damage, obviously. And if you want to make sure that he does take damage, we can pay attention to this health bar. So if we, if we can actually aim at his head, you can see that his health is decreasing. So if we shoot in the head, it decreases a little bit more and then we can actually kill him. Okay, that's our basics down. Now what we need is a mechanism to get six of these players to spawn in random positions. And then we need a time function. So we start a time at 10 minutes and then when the time ends, the game actually ends. Okay, what we need is a game manager. Okay, this is our game manager and it already has some features to it, some UI features. And now all it's missing is a function to spawn in players. So to spawn in players, we're going to need positions to actually spawn them. So you might have guessed how we're going to do that is by simply creating empty game objects and placing them around the scene. So for example, this is a game object that has nothing in it. It's just an empty game object. What we're going to do is color it. So now it has a identification way and we're going to create a bunch of these. Okay, now I have six random positions that AI can spawn. The next thing you need is a reference to instantiate these. Okay, this is the model that we're going to use. So to actually use this model, it has to be a prefab object. As you can see, it already is a prefab object. So if you don't know how to make a prefab object, literally just grab it and place it inside your assets folder. And that makes you a prefab object. So we're going to take that prefab and instantiate it in these positions. So obviously we're going to need an array of objects. And now we're going to load this array with every child that we can find in here. Before we load this array with game objects, first we're going to have to define the length of this array since we can't add to the length of it. So the way you do that is by reading the child count of this spawn position points. We're going to mark them both as public. And now in our game manager, we have spawn points. And after you create that, drag in your folder and drop it into the spawn points. If we now hit play, we should have a array with seven elements. And now to load this array with actual game objects, we're going to use a for loop. This is the syntax of the for loop. You assign every element to every game object element. We save that. And now we have a list of seven elements and we have seven elements actually loaded inside the array. Now let's get a reference to the AI players and let's create a method to spawn those players. So to spawn players, we're going to need to instantiate a player, then move that player inside this game object transform. To instantiate it, obviously, we're going to use a for loop. And then inside that for loop, we're going to define a new game object of type player. And then we're going to instantiate that same AI player that we imported from here. Next, we're going to change the transform of this player into one of these points. And that is literally all you have to do. Don't forget to run this method inside your awake function. Okay, now we have a new slot to drag in our AI. We're going to drag it from here and drop it into the AI slot. And now let's try to play the game. Slight issue. Well, 
to solve that, instead of changing the positions after we instantiate them, we instantiate them at a set position and a quaternion identity. This quaternion identity is constantly facing one way. So if we save that and try to play the game, we'll see that they spawn in those positions. And we can obviously shoot at each one of them and kill them. Okay, now we have a set number of players. All we need is a time up here. So when the time runs out, the game ends. So let's create a new header, call it rules, and let's set a time in minutes only. So matches can last only a set number of minutes. And when this minutes hits zero, the game ends. Okay, once you define a minutes value, to decrease it is as simple as saying minutes minus equal to time dot delta time. And then to display this minutes, for now I'm using a GUI layout. Okay, here is our minutes. I'm going to set it to 12 seconds for now. This is in seconds, by the way. We didn't turn it into minutes yet. Okay, now if we pay attention to this corner, we'll see that it's actually dropping. We can see that in here as well. Minutes are dropping. And now if you want to convert this minutes into seconds, first we're going to calculate the amount of seconds, the total amount of seconds. So seconds is equal to minutes times 60. Then we're going to decrease those seconds by one with this time dot delta time. Then we're going to calculate how many minutes are left by dividing seconds times 60. And then obviously we're going to display them with the GUI layout. First we're going to display the amount of minutes, then plus the amount of seconds percent 60. So this gives us the amount of seconds and in game this is how it looks like. So we have 12 minutes and 54 seconds to play left. And this is obviously going to decrease by time. Okay, now let's make a timer up here. So we actually know how much time we have left. Okay, now we have a working timer that decreases over time. And for the last thing, let's make a way to end the game. So to end the game, we need a reference to our player and a reference to all the AI players. So back when we create our players, we're going to create one more array to store those created players. We're going to define the length of the AI players corresponding to the spawned array. And after defining the length of that array, we're going to fill that array. So to fill it, we're going to go where we spawn it. So right after we spawn it, we're going to say player and the index of i is equal to player. And that will fill up this player's array. And where we calculate this time, we're going to do a if statement and we're going to check if seconds is lower than or equal to zero. So if there's no more seconds to play, we're going to end the game. And for now, inside this game end game function, we're going to destroy all the AI players. So we're going to go into a for loop and for each AI player, we're going to destroy. So simply say destroy and for the game object, pass in AI players in the index of I. Now, all we have to do is wait for this timer to hit zero. Okay, so we're approaching zero. And they all despawn. Okay, great. This is a success. Now the time is going into negative. And that is all good for now. So that's about it for this tutorial. Make sure to leave a comment down below what you want me to do for the next videos. And I'll see you next time.